Hello again, and welcome to episode three of our series, The Diary of an Endodontist. So today we are going to talk about access cavity. Access cavity can be quite tricky, and there are some tips that I'm going to show to you. So stay with me. So when we see a case like that, the main thing that we need to check is how many roots, first of all. So we can see that root, but is it a single rooted tooth or not? A CBCT would have said to us how many roots there were. This case I did prior to the CBCT, so I couldn't count. The main thing then is to access the tooth and then try to find at least four canals, or at least three canals, that is a normal molar situation. And how can we go in a case like that and access that tooth? Let's see what we can do first. This case is from a friend, Chris Emery. He used to work with us. And um, what you can't do is to go and do a straight line access without confirming the angulation of the root. You need to pay attention where the root angles inside of the bone. If you haven't got a CBCT, like in this case, you need to pay attention, measly distally at least. If you drill straight, you end up perforating. In this case in particular, the crown was not too good distally, was leaking, and Chris had to remove the crown. So the access in this case was not too difficult. But there are cases where you can't, although the margin is not good, uh, good either, you can't remove the bridge, for example. You need to access first through the tooth. What you need to be careful is that the, the line of the canal is centered in the tooth here, and you think you are going the right direction, but you can't find it. So where are you going? If you can take a CBCT, then you will see that you are going too far back in this case, for example. So just be careful because if you persevere, you will end up perforating the tooth. So when you notice that you are radiographically, you are on over the canal, but you can't find it, don't proceed because you are going probably in the wrong direction. And most often you are going wrongly, palatally, buckly. So that's how you are going because that, that is the angulation you can't see on a conventional X-ray. Going back to our case, we need to do the access cavity. First thing you encounter when you are doing the access cavity is the calcification in the pulp chamber. You need to go through that, and there are ways that you can go through that. And the main thing that you can focus and buy in your armamentary is the diamond burr, so you can go inside and vibrate with the ultrasonic and remove that. This is, of course, not the same tooth. And the only thing I put that slide is because I want to show to you that in the majority of the case, the MB2 is a perpendicular line, is located in a perpendicular line between the mesiobuccal canal and palato, and then another line between the distal buccal to perpendicular to the MB palato. And that's where in the intersection, probably around one, two millimeters mesially, that you will find the MB2. But there are cases that that doesn't apply, and the case I'm showing today is one of them. So first of all, we thought it was a single rooted tooth, remember? And we didn't have the CBCT to confirm. When we accessed, we found the calcification in the pulp chamber, which makes it difficult to understand how many canals there are in the, the tooth, unless you have a good magnification. And that's what I normally say, either the microscope if you have the option, or if you can't uh, afford a microscope, then at least a good pair of loops. This is the tooth and always under the rubber dam, 
sealing it properly so the sodium hypochlorite doesn't flow into the soft, the soft tissues under the rubber dam. This is the tooth that we are treating in this case. And think about the MB palatal line and now cross section with the DB towards the mesial. Look at the intersection. It's completely far from the area, not even one, two millimeters, completely far from the area that we found the MB2. So there are cases that are very tricky and without the magnification, it's nearly impossible for you to find those canals. This is the end result. As you can see, there are four canals in this tooth. The tooth is now ready to have a crown. Yes, I don't like the coronal prep as well, the, not the coronal, the corbial duct. I would say it doesn't look too pretty. The, mar, the, par, the lines are not too parallel. Uh, it's not retentive enough. But if you look at the, the, the pre-op x-ray, there is enough coronal structure, the tooth is structure, for the composite. So when the dents proceeds with the crown, they are going to reprep that tooth and adjust the core so it's more parallel. I hope you have enjoyed this case and that you can use those advices when you are preparing your next molar at least. Pay attention on the points highlighted and be careful not to go and perforate the tooth. It is very important that you do a minimal prep coronally so you can preserve as much tooth structure as possible for future. If you haven't yet uh, subscribed to our channel, please do. And if you can like share with a friend, I'll be very thankful. And if you want to put any comment, any case that you want me to discuss further in our next episodes, I'll be delighted to see that. Stay tuned. Thank you very much.